to Sports Update, Era Kirjala joins from Qatar. Era, what's been happening in Qatar? There's been a lot of politics, there's been a lot of back and forth. What's going on? And the games, anyway. I must actually tell you that, Rufai, politics have dominated quite a lot of happenings at this World Cup, and this will be remembered as a heavily politicized World Cup. But more, important, more, importantly, more importantly, I must actually tell you the African teams have risen to the occasion. The African teams have shown that they deserve their place here, here at the Mondial, and they've given a good account of themselves. And I have a sports veteran that would help us probably exponentiate all of this and look at how African teams are actually faring, and more importantly, also looking at the politics, talking about no other than Dr. Mitchell Obi. Dr. Mitchell Obi, I want to say thank you very much for joining yeah. us here on the morning show. And before we talk about the politics of the game, Talk to us about the showing of African teams. Senegal, the Teranga Lions, have earned their place in the last 16. Yesterday, beating Ecuador two goals to one. We're looking at Morocco. We're looking at Tunisia today. Looking also at Morocco, the possibility of them qualifying. Also, Ghana. Talk to us about the African teams and their performance at this World Cup. Thank you very much. I can feel the excitement in your voice. Uh, for the first time ever in uh, Africa's uh, World Cup, uh, history. Uh, we have teams that have made it or ha hoping to make it to the second round and no team is looking like they want to go so early. Asia already has a team out uh, with Qatar the host who have shown uh, uh, brilliance in organization but on the pitch uh, they are looking wanting and they are out of it all. But Africa, even as we have gone through two games Five teams are still confident of going into the uh, second round, and that is happening for the first time. And if we get to have at least uh, three teams in the second round, that would be uh, a phenomenon, uh, perhaps a record. And this perhaps looks like an open World Cup where the continent can find her place. Uh, I've looked at all the teams, and even looking at who can really leave this cup on December 18 looks like... Uh, uh, an uphill task for any team. Not even Brazil, you can never be sure because uh, their last game showed that uh, they could be caged. And so, Africa is excited. The Senegalese Lions showed what it takes to play. They were comfortable in their play. They knew exactly what to do. And to think that Africa, for the first time, is coming to the World Cup having all African coaches. That's where the deeper joy is. It tells us that we're at least taking a step, making an all-round organization of our game from the coaching side to the playing side and then of course um, you want to say uh, from the side of the fans <laughs> right. now we are here at a workshop which you are one of the panelists i'm talking about what now africa looking at africa and how we can deepen the conversation about using the world cup to project ourselves Talk to us. Why is this particular workshop important, especially looking at the round, the politics of the game? This World Cup has been heavily politicized, but nothing from Africa. Africans are not standing up in the area of politics to make a statement. Why is workshops like this important? Thank you. Uh, critical is even where we are. We are in the education city of uh, Qatar, and this is the uh, intellectual hub of uh, this uh, country that has showed that small is beautiful, small is strategic, and small can uh, make the difference. And when you look at uh, what we are doing, what about Africa? That is uh, the uh, title of our uh, involvement. And we are looking at the legacy benefits of what um, Africa has done in the past, taking the South African example where we hosted. We had beautiful uh, structures, uh, stadiums like you have here in uh, Qatar. What happened? What did South Africa do to galvanize Africa, to lift Africa from just being not only a playing nation, but also an organizing nation, using football as a canvas to turn around? Uh, we'll talk about um, the sustainable development goals, how we can use football as uh, the enabler, which is what that document tells us to do. And I think Qatar has effectively done that. 
they have a developmental plan of 35 years and sports has become the, the rallying point. It's become the, uh, the tool to fast track development and I think we need to uh, key in that direction. And this uh, uh, conversation today here with uh, some of the intellectuals in the business looking at how Africa has come, 50 years involvement in the World Cup, what are our gains? What have we really concretized in terms of benefits? Right. Uh, and can we get to even win the World Cup? <laughs> if, we can, if we can host the World Cup, which we have done, can we get to win the World Cup? And uh, that, the, the, the statement is simple. How do we get to win the World Cup? And if we win the World Cup, can we win the hearts of the world in terms of making Africa the place to be? Yes. Some people say uh, Africa is still a virgin territory, still a treasure waiting to be uh, explored, and not exploited, as uh, uh, many will want to, to think. So we have to simmer, uh, you know, bring down, granulate some of uh, these elements and see how we can get an Africa that is not only ready or purposeful in getting to win the World Cup, but an Africa that's ready to look again to host the World Cup. There is Egypt going for a bid with Saudi Arabia and Greece. There is Morocco. They've been a consistent, uh, they had a consistent bid to host the World Cup, and Morocco has been the haven for hosting anything in Africa. You know, uh, right. yeah, so there are so many African countries hungry to do, to do what Qatar has done. Dr. Michel Obi, thank you very much for giving us your time here on Arise News. My pleasure. All right. All right. So as we've been looking at how things are actually played out, it's unfortunate that politics has taken a front and center role here at the World Cup. Iran were muscled. According to what we heard, Tehran gave an order that if there were, if the players did not sing the national anthem against the United States of America, there will be heavy reprisals for the players and their families. And as we've seen as a trend here, when threats are issued, most of them actually heed to those threats. The question has always been, why stand up to why stand up for a cause if you cannot see it through? Has been the big questions a lot of people are asking because we've seen the armbar issue fall by the wayside. We've seen Iran try to politicize their own national anthem. They've actually buckled under the pressure and more orders that have actually played out. It's unfortunate this particular World Cup has been centered around politics and happenings around the world as against the beautiful game that has delivered upsets, that has delivered moments of joy. And once again, we are seeing African teams rise to the occasion and shine like a million stars. Well, Aaron, to comment on the politics, the match between USA and Iran yesterday uh, was uh, a battle of political force. Okay, but at the end of the day, the USA, uh, through Pulisic, uh, managed to win. But even more important was the fact that that match was not just on the pitch, it was also in the stands, where Iranian fans, you know, were divided between pro-government protesters who came to the uh, uh, stadium and also anti-government uh, protesters who were supporting uh, the uh, Americans. And then, you know, with... Uh, uh, you know, the whole thing degenerating at some point into people slapping each other and engaging in uh, fisticuffs and pushing uh, phones and cameras in each other's uh, faces. You know, this is how it is. Uh, it's been very emotional. And uh, you are quite right. Uh, those players, uh, they sang the, uh, the Iranian players sang the national anthem yesterday. Uh, they also did so uh, during the encounter against uh, Wales when we had the Iran versus uh, uh, Wales. But in their opening match against England, of course, that was when they put that protest. But whatever intimidation they may have received uh, from Tehran, from the Iranian authorities back home, what is clear is that there are many Iranians at that World Cup who are using the opportunity to protest the killing of that 22-year-old uh, lady by the uh, moral police of uh, Iran in September. Now, uh, another interesting uh, 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 March yesterday was the battle between uh, England and Wales. Three Lions, three goals, three games. And uh, you know, the whole of England is uh, ecstatic. Uh, it was said that it would be a battle of Britain, but it was a one sided, you know, uh, battle of Britain, dominated throughout uh, by England uh, with Marcus Rashford uh, proving that it's good for the world stage. Uh, he's got a brace. And then there was also uh, Phil Foden. 
And then, of course, Senegal did very well. We've been saying Senegal without uh, Sadio Mane may not be able to put up a good show. Uh, but uh, Senegal uh, did even better yesterday uh, through Ismail Assa and uh, Kalidou Koulibaly uh, beating Ecuador. The Netherlands managed to beat uh, Qatar. You know, Qatar will go down in history as the first host in the history of the World Cup that will lose all three matches in the group uh, stages. That's quite uh, uh, some history, uh, nonetheless. But uh, finally, my final comment has to do about you. You know, I think we should use this opportunity also uh, to celebrate uh, Kunle Sholaja, who was honored by FIFA and the International Sports Association for having covered nine World Cup tournaments. Started in 1990, this was his ninth one. And it was among those uh, 82 persons who were, who were given, uh, uh, who were given uh, you know, certificates of achievement and also miniature uh, World Cup uh, you know, trophy. Uh, congratulations to Kunle Shulaja. And uh, you are following in his footsteps. So he has done nine World Cups. Uh, you probably will do 16, 17 <laughs> and win your own award. Two Africans there, Kunle Shulaja and Mark Glesson of uh, South Africa, who have been very consistent sports reporters at the uh, World Cup. So see you, uh, you know, making your own record yes, as time I, goes on. I, I mean, we can't, wait, we can't wait for you to smash it, Aaron. I mean, we trust you. But I think the thing about this World Cup is, I don't know which one, you know, has become the most controversial. Was it 1978 World Cup in Argentina or this Qatar World Cup? Because apart from the good quality of football, which I attribute to the fact that Footballers were mostly in season when the World Cup started. It's been so much controversy here and there. Like the fight in the stands by some of the American supporters, you know, the armband, the, the uh, what is it called, the LGBT rights armband, and some other issues that have dogged um, this Rufai, World Cup. Rufai, yeah. Rufai, permit me to just cut you short. I have the man here that Doctor just spoke about. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Shulaja. Shulaja. Congratulations. And <laughs> Congrats. Okay. Uh, you want to say something? How does right. it feel like okay, they are uh, saying, con saying congratulations to you? Speak uh, to Dr. Ruben. Oh, thank you. Oh, Doc, how are you? I'm fine. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, just you can, you can congratulating you on air. <laughs> on nine World Cups. Put it on the air, yeah. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. Congratulations. Okay, um, Mr. Kulis, while we're still trying to reconnect to them, um, I must actually say congratulations to you and Dr. Ruben was just mentioning the fact that as it stands right now, now uh, Aaron, if you can, if you can ask him. For you. Well, it's been very, very, uh, very, very uh, impressive for me as a person because attending the World Cup is a passion I developed very early in my career and I'm happy that I'm still maintaining that uh, trend. I hope to still achieve what they said in the, uh, La Liga. The, I mean, uh, attending the tenth one, which is La Decima. That's my goal. After that one, maybe if I still have the strength, if I still have the resources, I'll still continue to attend more and more World Cup. But the La Decima is, is a goal that I want to achieve. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, Congratulations to you once again. Yeah, thank you. All right, All right. We'll, we'll say a very big thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Aaron, for your time, and congrats to him once again.